and welcome to NTA Nationwide. I am Miriam Akbata. Experts have noted that Nigeria's capital market is small compared to the nation's economy. This is one of the challenges facing Nigeria's economic growth as it currently contributes less than 20% of the country's gross domestic product, GDP. The second capital market forum hosted by the Senate and House of Representatives Committees on Capital Markets and other regulatory agencies seeks to address this and other challenges working against Nigeria's economic growth post-depression stage. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo represented and other key stakeholders described the theme of the forum Capital Market as a catalyst for growth and development as an acknowledgement of the need for expansion while consolidating on achievements of the sector through legislative reforms. The fact that there is a strong positive correlation between the level of development of the financial system and economic development for the simple reason that financial markets act as intermediaries between lenders and borrowers. Funds, long-term funds, flow into the capital market, then new businesses will be created, existing businesses will be strengthened, and uh, employment will be generated. The forum will create an avenue for participants to brainstorm on the role of commodity exchange, agricultural development, and capital market options for funding projects. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment Okechukwe Nelama has charged Nigerians, Nigerian youth to embrace small and medium enterprises as there are huge opportunities that remain untapped enough to improve Nigerians' economy. And Minister said this during the Redeemed Christian Church of God Empowerment and Skill Acquisition Scheme themed Connect, Empower and Grow in Nigeria. Oyeyemi Ajayi has the details. Inception of the Buhari-led administration, the campaign on the need to look beyond oil as the mainstay of the country's source of income has been on the increase. Different sectors, including agriculture, ICT, among others, have shown that indeed they are worth tapping into. On increasing the sources of revenue for the government... This time around, the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Okechuku Enelema, is taking the campaign to the church encouraging them on the need to embrace MSMEs towards the economic growth of the nation. The general idea is that we want to encourage public-private partnership. What do we mean by that? The government should cooperate more with the citizens and the businesses so that working together, we are stronger. So that's what we're doing. Speaking on the theme, connect, empower and grow, the pastor of the church said Nigerian youths should not always wait for the government to do everything for them as there are roles they can also play. Opportunities that have been provided by the government and that those opportunities are waiting for those who will assess them. And what he's done for us today is has given us the information we require to go into the marketplace. The minister said Nigeria is blessed with human capital resources, which if fully utilized, will make the country to be envied by others around the world, including the so-called developed ones. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi. News. Now to education matters. The 2018 budget may have been signed, but given the intrigue cases and complaints arising from the budget figures, issues are still being thrown up, especially the insertions and cuts by the National Assembly. One of the such cuts is the reduction of provisions for unity schools from 5 to 2 billion naira. Rashidat Mustafa Olagunju looks at it and the effect will have on infrastructure and security, which the proposed five billion was meant for. In Queen's College, we had serious challenges last year that led to the death of three beautiful, promising coins. We had to survive without water. It was a very bad experience for all of us. With during water scarcity, a lot of my classmates were fainting, and it was so terrible. Before this experience by students of Queen's College in Lagos, students of Federal Government Girls College, Efon Alai, had also suffered similar fate that led to about 300 students being hospitalized as a result of water-borne diseases. Aside this, 
there have been reported cases of fire incidents in Unity schools, as well as attacks on secondary schools in some parts of the country. This necessitated the budgetary proposal of the amount to foster recurrence. Now, the first question asked by an interested group is, if the initial proposed 5 billion naira could actually address the challenges in these institutions. Let us start from the premise that budgetary provisions for the ed education sector in general has been very appalling over the years. Consistently, it has been on a decline. Starting from that premise, then you would understand that 5 billion for 103 unity schools in the country pales into insignificance given the amount of rot in that sector. Secondly, how will this cut by the National Assembly impact on federal government's plan to secure and provide conducive learning environment to students? It has a spiral effect. We are already talking of over 10 million out of school children, and that's before the issue of insurgency got to this level where we have the Chibok adoption and then the Dapche adoption early this year. The 5 billion naira was meant to procure closed circuit television cameras, construction of perimeter fences around the schools, and provision of solar power systems and solar powered motorized bottles for regular supply of water in the schools. Rashida Mustafa Olagunju, NTA News. As the first sub-national state joins the Open Government Partnership, Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasir El Rufai was among speakers on using ICT in advancing civil participation. Frank Uzoma Olua reports that the Eyes and Ears project made the state to stand out at the just-concluded Global Summit in Tbilisi, Georgia. The report. The Eyes and Ears project is an application in Android developed by three young engineers in Kaduna State. The idea is to enable citizens monitor the progress of more than 3,000 ongoing projects, especially in the health and education sectors. We had to expand, equip, and staff 255 health centers within three years. We have done about 200 now. We are not yet there, uh, but we've seen significant reductions from 82% not going to hospital to have their babies, we are now down to 48% because of tools like this. The project from other countries focused on ICT as a support for a better connection with people, monitoring, opening a new era of citizens' participation and we go civic participation system. The Open Government Partnership supports coalition and governments who do things differently to improve the lives of the citizens. What uh, Kaduna has done is outstanding. It's uh, showcasing its eyes and ears project, which is a tool that enables the state government, include the citizens, in monitoring the progress of projects it is implementing across the state. Uh, we are delighted that within this short period, within a space of one and a half years, we now have one of our states, Kaduna State, that has been recognized globally as one of the states that will participate in the global OGP framework. We are learning uh, some of the things we need to uh, ensure that we do not only call ourselves members of the OGP, all right, but we will be active in implementing OGP principles. For Kaduna State, the next stage is to create a feedback system known as CityFit, where every complaint from citizens will receive prompt response. Franka Uzoma Olwa, NTA News. Now to Science Matters. The world will soon experience the largest lunar eclipse for the century. Astronomers say the 2018 lunar eclipse can be spotted by people in, the near, in nearly everywhere across the, the globe with the exception of North America, where it will not be visible at all. Science correspondent Kirian Umwayo reports. Reports indicate that the entire eclipse from start to finish begins on the 27th and ends on 28th of July and starts at once everywhere on the night side of the Earth. Therefore, people can view it at different times across the globe. The main feature of the lunar eclipse is its color, which is red, and that's why it is referred to as 
Blood Moon Lunar Eclipse. Now, joining me to provide further explanations on this planetary development is Dr. Ayatunji Benjamin Benro, Deputy Director, Planning and the Research, National Space Research and Development Agency, NASDA. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, um, what is the special feature in, in this year's uh, ec lunar eclipse? Um, apart from the normal reddish appearance of the moon, which occur whenever you have lunar es eclipse, this year also you have the mass is closer to the Earth at this period. So apart from you seeing the red moon, you are also have you also have the opportunity to see the mass. Mass will be the brightest thing you see. So, the brightest star you see close to the moon at that time mm -hmm. is the mass. Now, why is it uh, said that uh, it's going to be the longest uh, eclipse, lunar eclipse uh, in 2018, in fact, uh, in this century? The duration of a lunar eclipse is de depend on three factors. Factor number one is the angle of inclination of the moon itself to the orbit of the Earth because they are not concentric. Factor number two is the shape of the Earth. And factor number three is how close is the moon to the earth. Now, three things, these three things combine at this moment. The, the moon is far from the earth, making it very small. The position at which the earth is, is longest. And because of the tilting, that makes the moon to stay longer in the shadow of the, uh, of the earth than any other eclipse we are going to have in this century. Now, when next are we expecting such eclipse in um, the world? Basically, we're going to have a lunar eclipse that will be observed in Nigeria on the 21st of January 2019, but it's going to be shorter. Short, okay. So we need to take advantage of this and enjoy it. Now, uh, is there any, any spiritual connotation to this event? Um, not really, not, nothing at all. Okay. Um, there's a story of Columbus using it to um, get something from people when he was stranded in Jamaica, yeah. but there is nothing it's spiritual not about it. It's uh, Ayatunji Buenro from NASDA, and it's going to be a spectacular display of lunar showmanship. Kirian Umayo, NTA News. I actually look forward to that. Now, Nigerian national career continues to get the attention of citizens. Details of this and more as we join Higino in Lagos. Good to see you, Higino. Thank you, Miriam, and welcome to Lagos. Mixed reactions have continued to trail the recent unveiling of a new national carrier logo, Nigeria Air, by the federal government. A Makawa sought the views of some Nigerians and now reports. Of the new national carrier logo by the federal government last Wednesday is a public-private partnership that will have flights ply 81 routes across countries of the world. Some Nigerians have applauded their initiative stating that it's long overdue following the collapse of the Nigerian Airways in 2003. With the government owning 5% stake in the joint venture, respondents are also optimistic that it will stimulate competition and growth in the aviation sector. The technical partner which be a world reputable airline, world class airline, I, I sincerely believe that's what it should be, will manage the place, run it for quite some time with a Nigerian, I'm sure, second line managers who will understudy them. It's a, it's a good concept, it's a good idea, but that's a lot that needs to be done, a lot. Being in the industry, a lot needs to be done. Meanwhile, some Nigerians have expressed contrary views, stating that the initiative requires concerted efforts on the part of government and its partners. They should ensure that every control system is put in place. Let's see if it will not be mismanaged like the previous one. This is business, and they should allow business people to handle it. It's 5%, as they said. They will have 5% stake. So if that be the case, well, I know that if good investors come in, it will, it will, it will work. It's not a no-no, but let us see it as a private venture, ab initio. No note from anybody, no note from any Nigerian should influence the ticketing. So people have reasons to be afraid when they look at what happened before, but the fact of the matter is that they are not the same model. They advise stakeholders to ensure that the national carrier would favorably be of international standard. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTE News. In its quest to create awareness aimed at improving the life of the girl child in Nigeria, on it a professional ladies circle, a non-profit making organization has organized an awareness walk in Lagos. Annie Daniels has details. 
The over three hours walk took off from Admiralty Way, Lekki, all the way to Ikoyi, Banana Island, and back to Lekki. It was to sensitize the public on the need to take seriously the well being of the girl child, especially in the area of education. Basically, what we're trying to do today through this walkathon is to raise funds for a scholarship fund which we have established uh, to educate um, indigent girls girls who, uh, for one reason or the other, their parents cannot afford to send them to senior secondary school and tertiary institutions. OPLC is uh, getting ready to um, step into that gap and make sure that these girls do not lose the opportunity to be empowered through education. Environment determines how the child grows up. If you grow up thinking, okay, my mom belongs in the kitchen, that's your mentality. So as we promotes the girl-child education more and more, the girls get more exposed and we're encouraging them. They, have, they can see what women can become. These concerned women under the edges of Onisha Professional Ladies Circle insist that disregard of the rights and privileges of the girl-child is making women contribute less than is expected of them in the nation's political scene and other fields of endeavor. We're not rubbing shoulders with the men. We're not, we don't intend doing that. We're trying to train the girl child, make sure that the girl child has the best education. The boy child and the girl child should be given equal opportunity. Women activists say with programs like this one, as well as political will, women and the girl child will effectively contribute their quota to nation building, even beyond expectation. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. Let's now link Femicide in Joss for stories trending there. It's over to you. Hello and welcome to Joss. To achieve peace Joss. and development in Plateau State, dialogue amongst ethnic, religious and political groups must be strengthened. Governor Simon Lalong made this assertion when a delegation of the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and the United Nations Women on Peace, Exchange and Learning visited him at the government house Little Rayfield, Joss. Zen Red Ding Moon reports. Governor Lalong urged Plateau citizens to love one another and unite irrespective of their political, ethnic and religious difference. The governor pointed out that peace is a cardinal principle in the present administration and so appealed to citizens to be patient as government is working on structures already set up to sustain peace. What we are planning, like I said, is for the future. It has to outlive, it has to stay. We have to structure, we have to nurture it. So that when we live as politicians, we will always turn back and say, yes, we've established something that will bring peace. Leader of the UNDP and UN Women Delegation from Adama and Gombe states, Stephen Ayuba said they were in Plata State to understand the peace architecture in place by the state government. The paradigm shift from the reactionary processes that has always been used, whenever there's a breakdown of peace and order, whenever there's conflict, to a sustainable architecture that will transcend any structure of bringing peace in any setup. The delegation also commiserated with the state over the recent attacks on some communities. In Joss, Zenred Dingmun, NTA News. Governor Simon Lalong has cautioned against negative interpretation of the security challenges in Plateau as it is capable of portraying the state in bad light. Governor Lalong made this observation in a message to the enlarged peace and security meeting of the Southern Senatorial District of the state at the Longomai Palace in Shandam. Sani Ibn Saleh reports. Attendance where traditional rulers, transition committee chairmen, religious and community leaders, as well as heads of security agencies from the zone, represented by permanent secretary of security, Cornelius Schwalbiel. Governor Lalong frowned at the negative interpretation of the security situation in the state, stressing that government will not take it kindly with anyone who may want to use the situation for cheap political gains. Governor is really concerned about the reaction of people once there is an incident. Whatever happens, people must show restraint. 
Commissioner of Police Plato said command on the ID said the command has received reports of impending attacks on some communities in the areas, which prompted him to attend the meeting to find out firsthand the true picture of the allegations from the stakeholders. How do you want uh, what we have been experiencing and managing uh, in the northern part of the states to also uh, crop up here? Reacting to the reports, leaders refuted the allegations, saying it is meant to create fear among the people of the senatorial district. In Jos, Fanny Bonsaleh, NTA News. Still on security, the relocation of Operation Safe Haven headquarters to Birkin Ladi has begun to yield positive results. This followed the parade of seven suspects in connection with last month's violence in some villages in the area. Ndeyang and Abagyang reports. The recent attacks in some parts of the state instated Operation Safe Haven to relocate the Theater Command Headquarters to Barakiladi. In continuation of their investigations, the Director of Defense Information, Brigadier General John Agim, said due to intelligence gathering, the military operation has led to the arrest of more suspects who attacked Josu Village in Bokos and Zunku in Tanti Village. Our intelligence um, shows that they were part of those attacks. Those that were involved in the attack in the villages, our intelligence are walking around the club, and as soon as we get them, every one of them will be, uh, uh, will be arrested and be treated according to the law. The Director of Defense Information said the suspects will be handed over to the police for further investigations. We are going to be tried in, here in Joss. The police will continue the investigation and take them to court. This brings to 18 the number of suspects so far arrested by Operation Safe Heaven in Joss, Indian and the Abagyang, NTA News. And that's the size of our bulletin in Joss. Miriam, it's back to you in Abuja for the continuation of News Nationwide. Thank you. Now, time for a short break. Nationwide returns shortly. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism, as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony, are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. One nation bound in free. Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. The negative impact of fake news to unity, national development and growth is a thrust of NTA Tuesday Live this week. NTA Tuesday Live promises to be incisive and informative. Don't miss it. When you think about hospitality and affordable luxury away from home, then you talk about Sharon Ultimate Hotels, a secured and serene environment that offers kingly services such as 24-hour room service, impeccable security with CCTV surveillance, parking lots, free Wi-Fi internet service, free complimentary breakfast, restaurants that offers continental and local dishes, well-equipped fitness center with instructors, swimming pool, 350 capacity multi-purpose hall, laundry service, pastry corner, mini mat, and our suites are breathtaking. For reservation, locate us at plot 1710, Tafawa Balewa Way, Area 3, Garikia, Buja. Charon Ultimate Hotels, the ultimate place. 
much ado about jollof rice, you may say. But is the ado really about food? I think this debate is way beyond food. Nigerians marry Ghanaians, and we have them as bosom friends and vice versa. So, what is food to put asunder this great neighborly tie between the proximate English-speaking countries? Flash. She will go back to her flower, and you will come back, crawling to me like a puppy beaten by a rain, and your tail in between your legs. Professor John Bull investigates. Join us in this week's episode, titled Nigeria Jalof and Ghana Jalof, and find out the real taste of the dish and who cooks it better. It is in jet that wins, because a jollof rice is very good. So, Nigerian jollof rice wins. How were you able to distinguish between these two plates, which was Ghanaian jollof rice, and Nigerian jello fries. Over and out. Brought to you by Glow. The largest data network. Glow Unlimited. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. Now to political matters. Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Adams Oshomole, says the party will no longer condone indisciplining the party, warning of expelling any member of the party who fails to respect decisions of constituted authority, especially the president of the nation. This is against the backdrop of the alleged report that votes in the Labour Ministry were yet to be sworn in. Mr. Shumale told State House correspondent that it is nullity for any minister to appropriate the powers of the board to himself and the party under its current leadership would not tolerate such acts which is inimical to party ideals and governance. Yes. Then I know the better candidate in our system. Nobody, I emphasize, no minister is above the party. And they have taken on due advantage of the president's fatherly disposition. Now, it is the same blue or green pen that makes the minister. It is that same green pen that appointed these boards that they are refusing to swear in. And it is absolutely illegal for a minister in a democracy to appropriate the powers of a board. Because the laws establishing those institutions are clear that the boards have procedures to follow. So when a minister sits in his office, you know, appropriate the powers of the board in a democracy, not in a dictatorship, award contract that didn't go through boards, those are clearly abuse of office for which they are liable. We have respect for ministers, but only to the extent that they recognize that they are a product of a political party. And we are not negotiating that. If they have done that in the past, other our leadership, we will not tolerate it. They either comply or we will expel them from the party. When we will expel them, we will find out how the government can keep a rebel in the cabinet. There's no question about that. Experts have urged political parties in Nigeria to adopt the direct primaries as a way of giving voice to the electorate and deepening democracy in the country. While discussing direct primaries and its implications for democracy, guests on Good Morning Nigeria said this will return power to the people and help sanitize the political system. Lydia Samson has a report. A funny issue in Nigeria's democratic experience has been the lack of internal democracy that is reflected in the selection of candidates to stand for elections. Adopting direct primaries in the conduct of primary elections is said to be one way of addressing some of the problems. The guests described the use of the system by the APC in conduct of Oshun governorship primaries as encouraging. Carrying a card uh, of a political party does not actually make you a potential uh, uh, you know, voter. Ap apart from that, there is also the need for every card carrying member of a political party to also possess the permanent voter's card. Uh, because if you are engaged in the process of uh, selecting who the candidate will be during the election, then of course you must also behind you have the force uh, of voting on the day of the election. Some of these political parties as a briefcase and political parties, where you have a party that has become NGO. The aim of the registration is not to participate in an election, 
but to position um, some persons to be able to take advantage of whatever um, is, uh, is, is, is uh, one could gain during the process. Don't forget the fact that international NGOs usually support the parties in terms of building their capacity. So you have some people that register political party in order to target such a benefit. For the direct primaries to succeed, the guests reiterated the need for political party structures and membership register to be credible. It's, uh, every exercise, whether by direct primaries or indirect primaries, is subject to one form of abuse or the other. And there's an element that we always recommend, whether it's direct primaries or indirect primaries. It depends on the process and, the, and, and of course, the, the, the structure of the, of the party to ensure uh, a, a credible, uh, free and fair election. Going forward, Nigeria should progress towards a situation whereby we employ the direct primary, the direct voting system so that um, democracy will be deepened, so that democracy will be more participatory, so that um, the concept of some certain delegates parading themselves as elites, the concept of some certain delegates you know, being prone to corruption will be completely eliminated. The guests are optimistic that if properly imbibed, the direct primaries will, in addition to reflecting the will of party members, also provide a level playing ground for candidates who were hitherto skimmed out by the delegate system. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Sequel to the successful stakeholders' consultative meeting for the review of the task-shifting and task-sharing policy in June 2018, like minds gathered in Abuja to brainstorm on the ongoing review of the task-shifting and task-sharing policy of the federal government. It is at the instance of Development Research and Project Center, DPRC, in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Health. Patience Christopher reports. According to the World Health Organization, Nigeria needs 237,000 medical doctors, but currently has 35,000. The country is also said to be second in the area of inadequate number of nurses and midwives in Africa. Due to these and other factors, 65% of Nigerians lack proper access to healthcare services. With 70% of rural populations having no access to health care services. Hence, the introduction of tax shifting and tax sharing policy in 2014 by the World Health Organization. This tax shifting and tax sharing policy will help to provide the needed guidelines, will help to provide the needed um, standard of practice, will help to mitigate all the challenges that people are just providing uh, services that are of less quality to the community members. Tax shifting is about making sure that the other numerous health workers like um, CHOOSE, CHOOSE means uh, community health extension workers, JCHOOSE, junior community health extension workers, which you find in so many rural areas, will be able to assist the patients with defined tax that they can do without causing harm. We are all aiming to achieve the sustainable development goals and universal health coverage. But that's not going to be possible when you don't have enough human resources. The workshop is to address some of the challenges of policies such as funding gap, resistance to policies in some states for fear of job insecurity, amongst others. The Development Research and Project Center is a non-governmental organization which monitors and reviews the implementation of tax shifting and tax sharing policy of the government. In Abuja, Patience Georg Christopher, NTA News. Another break beckons. Stay with us. News which is shared for malicious purposes is a danger to our peace and security in Nigeria. Misinformation as fake news is a serious threat to our hard-earned democracy and promotes hatred and misunderstanding between our communities. We are all responsible for stopping the spread of fake news in its tracks. So, always check the source and credibility of any news item. Say no to fake news. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Yes. 
and a black. Yes, sir. Blue. Black or white? Yamala. Have I ever eaten white Yamala here before? Give me a mala and a mala. Do you have dodo? The cook girl. Good. Let me have some dodo. I want to put the meat in the bowl. Shaki. Suku. A body. I like my edo to be very tender. You have stockfish? Yes, sir. Good. Let's have some stuff. And the catfish, my favorite. Don't mind them. Look, um, look, 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 do you have a guru? When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Thanks for being there. Nigeria Navy hands over vessel for repairs as NDDC inaugurates Okwiboku Road. These and more with Daoju in Port Harcourt. Hello, Daoju. Good to see you. Welcome to Port Harcourt. Criminal infractions along Nigeria's maritime corridors are losing steam, consequent upon the sustained onslaughts against illegalities on the waterways by the Nigerian Navy. On Nge Fine Face reports on the latest success by the Navy with the handover of a vessel to operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The maritime corridors of Nigeria serve as economic hub for export and import of goods, especially those related to the oil and gas industry. The recent polarization of this strategic economic route by criminals who engage in sea piracy, crude oil thefts, Illegal oil bunkering and refining and associated acts of criminalities gave rise to the need for sustained policing of the waterways by the Nigerian Navy. Our recent success recorded in this regard is the arrest of nine suspected oil thieves. A vessel empty Exiba containing 800 metric tons of diesel, a badge and one locally made wooden boat in February 2018. What is interesting about this particular arrest is that the mother vessel which Exiba was expected to have received or sourced her product was not in the country at the time of the arrest, indicating and implying that the, source, the vessel sourced this product from questionable, uh, questionable places and they were delivered with the barge and the wooden boat. As we have always been doing, we will commence investigation into the case. If the suspect and the a vessel is found culpable, they shall have their field day in court. Seizures like this are expected to serve as deterrents to others contemplating criminal enterprise in the nation's waterways. From One River State, One Gye Fine Face, NTA News. Acting Zonal Director, NTA Port Harcourt Network Center, Cecilia Isen, says her administration will prioritize staff welfare, hard work, and discipline for optimal productivity. She made the declaration at the maiden general staff meeting held in the station. Robinson Deretaide has the details. NTA Port Harcourt Network Center is strategic in news and programs content gathering and dissemination in the South South region. It is against this backdrop that the redeployment of an experienced broadcaster, Cecilia Asien, as the acting general director of the center is most appropriate, having previously served as manager and assistant director news in the station. At the general staff meeting, she disclosed that staff welfare 
discipline and total revamping of the network center for effective productivity and coverage are among our top priorities. She noted that the NTA Director General has donated some equipment to enhance the reach of the station. All those issues will make the people of this zone to stand out in the Committee of State. We will promote them. In whatever form a staff life is affected, management will identify with them. In line with the Zonal Director's policy, management staff appeal to staff to put up character befitting of the organization while the cashier staff are assured of prompt payment of wages. And just like you see a mother is saddled with the responsibility of inculcating discipline at home, I think coming from that angle, staff should comply with that injunction and act accordingly. The meeting was interactive. She has started on a good note, assuring us of uh, staff welfare, and I think that is key to productivity. If she can keep her promises, I believe all staff will be happy at the end of the day. But the reason why she is putting welfare first, because she knows that once you take care of the people, then the people will produce results. Celia Asian was redeployed from NTO Wary, where she served as general manager. From Portacot, Robinson Deratede, NTNews. And that's it from here. It's over to Jumai in Medugri for their contributions to Nationwide. Hello, Jumai. Thank you so much, and thanks for joining us in Medugri. A four-day Northern Nigeria Writers' Summit on the development of a blueprint for literature was declared open by Borno State Governor Kashim Shatima. The conference with participants drawn from the academic community, writers and other professionals focuses on developing literacy in northern Nigeria. Jesse Tafida reports. Borno State Governor Kashmir Chetima said culture of reading and writing amongst students in the region should be encouraged as adequate attention is being given to the education sector. The governor stressed the need for people in the region to unite and face the challenges delivering development and commended leadership of the forum for initiating the conference. He disclosed that Omega schools built by the Borno State government will commence academic activities in September this year. Chairman of the occasion, Professor Olo Bafemi, acknowledged the governor's effort in supporting the forum, noting that the education sector in Borno has been revived under the leadership of Kashmir Shetima. Guest speaker Professor Tanima Abubakar said, because of the long history of schools in Borno State and development in the sector, the forum decided to choose Maiduguri as the venue of the event. He expressed the hope that resolution aimed at the end of the summit will be presented to the Northern Governors for actualization. Maiduguri, I am Jesse Tafida, NTA News. Borno State Police Command has apprehended 22 persons for committing various criminal offenses with life-threatening weapons in their possession. Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa has the details. Parading the 22 suspects under the supervision of Borno State Commission of Police, Damien Chukum, officer in charge of Special Anti-Robbery Squad, Mohammed Ibrahim, and officer in charge of Culpable Homicide of the State Criminal Investigation Department, Clement Jeffia said six persons are involved in armed robbery in Dambua local government, five persons in connection with vandalizing high-tension cable in Balbaya district of Bayo local government, while three persons are involved in stealing mercuries of transformers in Gultavu village in Askiroba local government area. The command also paraded three persons for committing culpable homicide and one person in possession of stolen vehicle from Gala local government, as well as apprehension of one Tijani Babagana of Meduguri Metropolis for engaging in fraudulent act. 18 live ammunition, one AK-47 rifle, one Dan gun and cutlass, as well as three bows and arrows were recovered from the suspected armed robbers. While reiterating the need for zero tolerance for criminal activities in the state, Commissioner of Police Damien Chuku announced the apprehension of a frontline politician of the People's Democratic Party, Grema Tarab, alleged to be involved in culpable homicide and inciting disturbances. Meanwhile, Borno State Police Command has decorated 184 officers who have been promoted to various ranks. 172 inspectors were elevated to the rank of Assistant Superintendent of Police, six Deputy Superintendent of Police to Superintendent of Police, three Superintendent of Police to Chief Superintendent of Police, and one Chief Superintendent of Police to Assistant Commissioner of Police. CP Damien Chuku charged the newly promoted officers to justify the development by showing greater commitment to the Nigerian police force. In Meduguri, Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa, NTA News. That sums up our contribution from May Degree is back to Miriam in Abuja. Hello, Miriam. Thanks. 
Now, what a literary set to be live reflects in communities in Aguata and Nambra State, where its provision through UNICEF EU WASH program has given the people a new lease of life. Uche Nguizu tells us more. For poor pupils of Angali Community School, teachers and parents, there is no limit to what they can achieve confirming the critical role water and sanitation play in the well-being of a people. The shortage of water do not allow us to carry out the hygiene practices very well. People travel from this community to a, a very distant town to collect water for their usage. Even if it's a community now boast of access to portable water and good hygiene, these pupils who call themselves hygiene ambassadors are taking the lead, making schooling more interesting. Girls like Chikamso don't have to miss classes anymore due to menstrual cycle, as there is now toilets and water for their convenience, courtesy of the UNICEF EU WASH projects. That we are putting in structures like the water and sanitation committees. This is really helping a lot in terms of uh, awareness cre uh, creation, hygiene promotion. We are putting in foot soldiers called the volunteer hygiene promoters. The impact of the EU UNICEF water supply and sanitation sector reform program too on the people is enormous, but not sufficient. Observers therefore stress the need for concerted efforts by government at all tiers, organizations and individuals for Nigeria to attain the SDG 6 target by 2030. Uche Nwizu, NTA News. A book titled My Name is Chizaram has been presented to the public to encourage young Nigerians identify with their heritage, celebrate their culture and speak their indigenous languages within and outside the country. It is coming from a UK-based Nigerian who has returned to touch lives positively. Momso Damian Dati reports. Ahambo, my name is Chizaram. Souls Exhale and Cinema Letters are the three letters books and several articles designed by Ambi Azem to address real-life challenges of the Nigerian youth, womanhood, cultural values and morals, with consideration to political issues around colonial times and current diversity within Nigeria. On women empowerment and relationships, hurts, emotions, um, healing and um, family. And then the second one is more on politics, culture, um, religion, immigration, diaspora, and um, race, I think, yeah. Then the final one, the cinnamon letters, is more religious for the Christian young women. So they're on topics that the church finds is really hard to um, talk about in the church world. 25-year-old Ambi Azem, a pharmacist with the best grades from a London-based university, who discovered writing, singing and poetry as her passion has returned home to touch the lives of Nigerians positively. Proceeds from the book will be going to charity from which many Nigerian youths have benefited. I took the tests and I scaled through Yes, They continued giving me, equipping me, not just my school fees, everything I needed for my education. Very young people can make it in any field of life. And that young people can also, those who are intelligent, think of the world, how to assist and bring value into this world. A woman being God created, there is a gift. What is that gift in you that you can use, you know, to affect your environment, to impact on the um, on your community, to impact on the population? Life leaves much to be desired by every Nigerian. Momso Damien Dati, NT News. Multiple Indicator Cluster Survey, MICS, 2000 to 2015 report indicates an increase in the practice of open defecation in Nigeria despite the support for sanitation by UNICEF, EU and other agencies. Uche Nguizu, who was on a team of UNICEF media tour, 
to Agwata Lake Governor Area of Anambra State reports on the impact of water sanitation and hygiene wash projects on selected communities. 2017 report shows more than 48 million people in Nigeria still practice open defecation and 32% of the number live in rural areas. This explains why UNICEF, in partnership with the Child Rights Bureau of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, focuses on improving approach to community method of sanitation through the WASH programs in selected six states and about 20 local government areas. At Onwaku, as in if it's a community in Agwata local government area of Anambra State, the impact of the water and sanitation project is already evident in the education and health of the people. This made us to have increase in our enrollment. Before, before it was 140, but now it's over 308 purpose. Something like a dysentery or diarrhea are no more rampant in the community. Going by the success stories here, what then is responsible for the stagnated progress in the attainment of the desired percentage of open defecation free ODF society? We cannot change the behavior for the people. Uh, we can best facilitate them to analyze their own situation and take decisions for themselves. A lot of effort now is um, making sure that behavior change uh, in, in communities where we are working on this project um, is, is being uh, institutionalized. Currently, only five local government areas are certified ODF. Uche Nwizu, NTA News. Now to sports. Chief coach of Eniba resigns as more stranded Nigerians want to return from Russia. Amanda Marcus has more on sports update. Head coach of Nigeria's national under-20 football team, Paul Aegbogun, has resigned his position as technical advisor of Eimba International of Aba, ending his third stint at the club. The coach left due to personal reasons. The People's Elephant's first assistant coach, Usman Abdullah, will take charge of the team on an interim basis. Eimba are fourth in the 2018 Nigeria Professional Football League standings with 38 points from 24 games. Meanwhile, a former Super Eagles player, John Utaka, is concluding a arrangements for Nigeria's participation in the second Satuk World Cup in Sofia, Bulgaria. The five-a-side competition is for less privileged children between the ages of 14 and 16, and about 16 countries, including Nigeria, Morocco, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, and Liberia from Africa will be participating. As far as we are concerned, we are trying our possible best to go there and win, not to Add to the numbers. Nigeria's representatives, eight players and two coaches, will depart the country for Bulgaria on the 8th of August for the competition, holding from August 12 to 17. Former World Scrabble champion Jigere Wellington of Nigeria has been ranked fifth in the current World English Language Scrabble Players Association rankings released on Sunday. According to the rankings, Ghanesh Asivatam of Malaysia is first, with Nigel Richard of New Zealand as second, and David Elder of Australia third. Nigeria as Eta Karo is ranked 13th, while former world number two Scrabble player and current Nigeria national player Moses Peter is ranked 14. After President Muhammad Buhari's intervention and returning stranded Nigerians in Russia back home, another batch of 38 Nigerians Monday morning converged on the Nigerian embassy in Moscow, seeking means of evacuation back to the country. With sports update, Amanzi Marcus, NTA News. Now a quick check on the weather picture across the country.
Well, that's our package on NTA Nationwide. Thanks for joining us.